Okay, well, I'm in my studio again this morning. It's absolutely teeming down outside. Uh, that's the scene I'm going to paint. Uh, the lovely old pond, Finching Field Green. And this is the way I'm going to lead you through it. I uh, already put the drawing down onto paper. So it's all ready to go. And I'm going to start painting. Okay, well, the first washes. Uh, normally sky and that's what I'm going to do this time I'm just looking at the grey sky outside so I'm going to uh, produce a grey sky on the scene so for a start off I use a little bit of raw sienna right now it's unusual for me this mix but so I'm going over onto dry paper I don't want it to be too wet um, with a little bit of raw sienna it's just going to be a cloudy sky really, a dull dreary old day so let's try and uh, capture that. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Grey. Now that's unusual for me, uh, rarely use Payne's Grey but there you go, let's ring the changes a little. Going to leave a bit of that yellow in the mix, I think you can probably see that okay. Uh, a little bit deeper Paints go at the top there and in that lower area. I'm painting around the building at the moment at this particular stage and I'm going to keep the sky fairly light. So it's a dull uh, day but um, overall um, we have a little bit of light in the sky and this side is going to take just a touch of red in there just to give it a little bit of warmth there, a little bit of an orangey tone to the sky that side. Always a nice thing to do. Uh, gives a, a direction of light, although I would say it's um, not particularly bright out there, but just adding a little bit more stronger um, colour to that area there. Just, just felt it needed a little bit of strength within the cloud work. Apart from that, um, I'm going to allow that to completely dry really. Um, a bit touch stronger in there just to link those two up there you go and it gradually peters away into the lighter area on the right good so we're going to leave that now leave that to dry let's paint a little bit of land so we're going to use cadmium yellow touch of ultramarine just to give me a nice sort of dull yellow that's the grass. There you go. Now that's the grass produced on the uh, un, below those um, buildings there. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of red into that, a bit of cad red, light red, anything like that, to to get the actual path area. Um, got white posts, so I've just got to be a bit careful, but. Not being too concerned with that. So that's the road area. There, like that. And there's a nice bit of green there. So I'm adding cadmium to that mix with a little ultramarine again. And I'm dropping that in there so that we get a gradual run through to a deeper green on this one by adding just a little bit more blue. And that's what you do. And that's the way, and introduce a bit of that. I want it light there, but obviously this is the, the correct green for this particular area. Not putting any, I'm going to put a couple of figures in, but not putting any um, any um, other um, uh, interests like cars or anything at this stage. Now, we've got the land. Now I'm going to paint in the um, brickwork for the building. I'm going to use light red for that with a touch of cad red in there. Uh, and perhaps even a touch of yellow. So I'm going to use going to use um, what's that? Raw sienna or yellow ochre, if that's the one you've got. And I'm going to paint all the sunny sides first. I want this to be a fairly quick rendition of what I'm looking at. Um, so that's that building there. That is the gallery up on the first floor. Lots of lovely um, arts and craft 
things for that they sell very nice so we're painting that in quite quickly uh, let's just add a little bit of tone yeah, a little bit of raw sienna neat in places just to ring the changes on that building and um, right another sunny area is there um, uh, oh there's a band of brickwork there the rest is white for the bricks that surround the windows that's dark across the top that's black painted area there we go so that's that and then we move on to um, oh there's a window there so I'm going to have to leave a gap I forgot to draw that in that's no, not a major problem um, you know no, not going to stop painting just leave a gap where the window will be good now I'm going to paint the brickwork of the um, the bridge itself now this I'm going to add a little more light red just to try and give that a sense that it's a little bit nearer to us than than the um, the actual um, building in the background I'm going to try and pull that forward if I can I'm not sure whether that's quite done. and I'm just leaving a bead of white to separate the top of the bridge from the um, the rest of the uh, buildings in the background and it's just purely the sunlit area that I've put in there and there is a uh, there is a grey area of sort of um, different coloured bricks at that point so I'm putting that in just added the panes grey to that really that's pretty much all that's required to create that allowing a little bit of that red to run in it blends it together nicely um, now we go into the a little bit of more local green now but local green I mean richer um, in color for there's an area of bank that we can see there that runs tapers down we can just about see a little bit of area of greenery there good so that's our main buildings in or oh, there is just a small area just tone that back a touch as I go back with the colors of red there for the other part of the building in the background I've actually put a bit of um, um, Payne's grey with that just to help knock that back we want the richer colors forward and the less intense as we go back now in the distance I'm going to add light red with Payne's grey and I'm going to paint the top of that roof let's go a little darker with that now I'm painting the distance areas um, let's try and pick up uh, adding a little bit of burnt umber with that too to try and get a slightly darker tone to that there we go um, a lot of that is in shadow we'll leave that then any shadow I'm leaving at this stage good okay well that's pretty much the first stage of the painting and I'll just allow that to dry okay well the next stage will be quite simply to paint in the roof burnt now we're going to use ultramarine and burnt umber get a nice dark gray if you notice well probably can't see at the moment but we've got a gray slate roof and that is quite dark even though it's you know it, it's not a great deal of light out there this morning so I'm trying to depict this as that so I'm painting that in nice and strong and just painting that in quite loosely quite freely uh, just a bit of what they call flashing uh, on the roof work so I'm leaving a bit of white paper nice to leave touches of white on edges uh, where required um, always a good thing to do um, and um, I know you're probably saying to me well where are they required well uh, any areas that like to catch light and the lightest part of any area in the painting really now I'm going to weaken that just a touch to paint the roof in the background 
and that will throw that behind. Same colour, but I want to throw it back in behind that. Paint them both the same tone. You would not feel that one is in front of the other. Good, so that's that. Okay, let's get windows in. Now for windows, just use a slightly smaller brush. No, let's use the same brush. Um, windows, they're very dark. Uh, so, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to make them a bit browny. Um, and don't use too much, don't need too much water on the brush for this. And all I'm going to do is just run across the top and just streak down and lift off. See the way it produces a nice feeling of light on the windows? Going to produce the same there. These will be a bit more solid. And uh, there's a couple, there's one there. And just one, two, three, four. There we go. I'm not counting. Well, I was, but um, I'm not producing windows exactly as you would um, see them. Oops, there. Nearly dropped the brush. Let's just mop that off. There we go. Good. Don't need that brush anyway. Right. Next will be the um, the windows at the front. Well, you can barely see those. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to simply, just a simple line. How many we got? Three. Right. That'll do. Two, three. And just going to put where the seals sit. There we go. Uh, there is just a little bit of dark colour before those windows. And that's going to be just simply painted in. There we go. Just a hint at windows there. There is a window there. Uh, there's one there. And we've got one there. The way I'm just dropping those in so freely and loosely. Uh, nothing too complicated at this stage. Good. Now I'm going to put, I think it's all the windows in. Probably leave something out soon, but there you go. Now I'm going to put a bit of greenery in, um, in the distance. And for that, we need a lot of blue to start with. And this is going to be quite a dark, distant it's ultramarine and cadmium yellow. Quite a distant bluey green. That's what we're looking for. And that's going to be for that area there. Nice bit of depth to that. Then as we come forward, we add a little bit of cadmium just to give it a bit more freshness. Yep. And that then streaks forward into there. Make it too much of a muchness. Right, now to that, I'm adding ultramarine and burnt umber. Because I want to get a dark sort of grey. Um, don't know what sort of tread it is, but it's, a, it's not um, what... I'd call a very colourful tree. So just add a little bit more water to that and that then flows over there like that uh, and that lays away into the distance. Like that. Let's go really dark. I'm adding just a touch of Prussian with that just to darken that off. There we are. I want that to be a little darker than that. So that's my distant tree. And one or two little darker touches at the base of some of those trees. There we are. Just to give a nice feel. That really lightens the sky up in the distance. Um, now I'm going to ring the change. Although it's still dark, I'm going to add more yellow, touch more Prussian, and just paint the lighter tree. Normally dark, but I'm going to paint it light. Purely to give me um, a sense of... Um, uh, We'll ring the changes really that's what 
this is all about the reason why it's a little bit lighter so that's the trees put in in the distance and uh, what have we got ah we've got I'm gonna now put ultramarine with burnt umber again so this is a different type of different slightly different mix for that roof there now I could have put it in at the same time as the roof because it's the same tiles but as the as the main building but I considered that it really does need um, to be a slightly different um, color so as it just changes things a little really right now more burnt umber more ultramarine looking for a nearly a black not going to use a paints grey could do but not going to don't like using paints grey too much like it here and there but not too much so this is pretty much black well it's a warm black really and um, we've got a beam that runs across there notice how I've not got too much um, paint on the brush because when you've got black painted surfaces sometimes you get lots of light sort of reflecting on the paintwork so I always think that always looks better than just a really black line and at the same time with the same brush I'm going to paint in the gutter oh there's a black let's just paint the gutter in there we go try and keep that fairly narrow don't want the gutter to be too there we go and there is a black board work down there and down there notice how I'm trying to use the same brush it's a bit rough and ready but um, I always feel that this sometimes works better than being too precise with everything gives a suggestion and there is a black piece of board running across the top of that window and uh, it's got some writing on but I'm not uh, bothering with that um, purely because um, can't really see what it says so uh, that's good okay right another bit of sunlight sunlit um, brickwork a little bit of red a little bit of brown just there and there that's there again I've painted that in a slightly different color I've not done the shadow areas if you notice all shadow areas I've left and then as we go around the corner we have a little bit of guttering there a little bit of guttering down there that overhangs that's looking fine good 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 um, right um, let's go in with the shadow oh, wait, hang on just a little bit of um, forgot about that uh, trying to paint fairly quickly but I forgot about that roof there really that needs to be put in there we are not putting gutters into the background um, building uh, and um, now to be fair it's just shadow work okay well the shadows are ultramarine with ultramarine with Indian red there are that's my shadow mix and I'm using more ultramarine to start because I want to paint in the the um, the mill which is white but in this instance I'm depicting it as a gray structure because that's what it appeared like against that light sky so there's the front of the mill and the sails coming down like that and this sail riding down like that just gently put it in let's not get too complicated with this these areas and it's just a bit of sunlight on the back edge there. Here we are, that's all you need. The mill is in. 
and now I'm going to add a little more red I'm going to do these chimneys and and they're just going to be purely dark just suggestive very suggestive I uh, don't think there's a pot there but there you go there's a chimney pot put in now um, and just just painting the lines there just to line the before I put in the main shadow okay now the next area of shadow will be ultramarine again it's going to be ultramarine and Indian red okay so to start with we're going to be very strong so we've got the two chimney pots and the chimney so there like that this is just the shadow work and and then of course we do have a little bit of overhang where the sunlight is a couple of pots bricks around the top and just a touch there there we are what could be simpler than that you know if you're too if you're not loose enough in one area and unfortunately, it's not going to have that nice crispness about it. Uh, three chimney pots and a chimney there. There we go. That's pretty much easy to put in. Um, okay, now this is where we really get interesting or interested in our shadows. Because I'm going to put in a nice clean wash of warm shadow. Lots of red going in here, and that is a very dark shadow on that back edge of that building there. There we go. And more red, a little bit more blue this time too. So red and blue. Trying to get a little bit more blue in there. And I've got used more red because it's obviously the reflection or the shadow of the brickwork. And it's nice and strong, nice and dark. There we go. Um, and also on the side of that, got a. There we go. That's that. That's good. Okay. Um, right now we go more blue now, considerably more blue. And I want to show up a slightly different shadow at the front and not quite as dark. So it's more blue, not quite as dark, and um, that's for inside the reveal there. And that slopes at that angle. There we are, a little bit of white on the top. There, like that. Um, we've also got shadow on that roof line there you go there like that nice bit of shadow there and we do have shadow um, on the underside of there and under there under the gutter touch down there but certainly there and there we've had a little bit of shadow on the windows a bad thing to do under the uh, window there, a little bit on this there, a bit underneath the overhang there, a bit on the windows there. All helps to give light and life to these buildings. Now there is an overhang shadow there, which is always an interesting feature. Um, now this, a little bit lighter now, there's a shadow there, uh, shadow under there, shadow there, shadow there. There we are. And that's the start of the shadow. I'm just going to let those dry. Okay, well, I've allowed that um, uh, to dry, the um, start of the um, shadow work. Um, now I'm going to add, finish off um, other areas of the shadow and um, just one thing I want to do before that I'm just going to put that um, dark tree in on that right hand side and for that 
I'm going to use Prussian blue with a touch of um, Prussian blue, touch of cadmium, but also burnt umber. It's Prussian blue, burnt umber, a little bit of cadmium, but mainly Prussian blue and burnt umber. And the reason for that is I need a very dark green. It really will pull that left hand side of the uh, picture in if I can get a really dark green there you go it's a good uh, good mix for dark greens and I'm losing a lot of paint on this um, uh, on the brush so can you see how that's chiseled instead of being a point it's like a chisel edge and um, that tells you that if it really points you're well loaded but it's a slight chisel edge it's sort of half loaded with paint which is just what I want and I'm just notice how I'm scratching even out of the board to start with just to try and get there we are and once you if you scratch like that you gradually lose a lot of paint from the brush and now you can start giving an impression of branches there we are a bit of density on the outside edge nice impression of branches hanging out there we go and as we head down going to be a little bit darker a little bit more richer so um, more blue, <coughs> a bit more yellow. There we are. See how dark and rich a green that that forms. Running out of picture there, but that's fine. Purely to get the right uh, sort of texture to that um, that lovely old uh, overhanging tree there. It really is a uh, an outstanding feature. Um, and it's actually behind the bridge, so I don't want that to hang over the bridge but it will be slightly in front of that area there there we are so that's in um, okay moving on we will be looking at um, under the water bridge under that bridge there and what I'm going to do for that I'm going to use burnt umber with ultramarine to give me a dark slightly bluey grey now the way I'm going to produce this is not going to be one dark black solid colour it's going to have um, a little bit of depth to it so what I'm going to do I'm going to be fairly dark to start with so now this is where we can actually pick out the arch of the bridge because it's darker than the bridge brickwork I can actually form the shape of the bridge like that there we are and as I paint around like that notice I'm not going right well I am going down to the water's edge now that is actually the bridge itself or, or immediately under it now I'm going to weaken the mix more water touch more blue just a little bit weaker than that there we are and all of a sudden you get a feeling of depth and that will marry up very nicely shortly when I come to paint in the actual um, reflection of that you've got to remember that it is in reflection there we are so that's the bridge arch and this is looking good um okay right now let's deal with the reflection itself well there's two ways of dealing with reflections wet into wet or wet onto dry well i'm going to do a wet into wet so i'm going to damp the paper paint across like that and damp the paper and I'm just going to damp into that damp area, that area of colour there. Because what I want, I want that to bleed through into that so we get a soft edge. Now, what you do, you damp the paper like that. It's not going to dry very quickly because it's a cool day. And damp the paper. Now, you've got white areas, you've got um, rich red areas. The thing is that 
the objects that will reflect first are the areas closer to you. So the bridge we've got to paint in, any bank uh, there. Uh, then on top of that will be any reflection that's left from the, uh, um, the buildings behind. So we need a red, which I'm going to use uh, the red from the palette which was cadmium and a little bit of I'm looking for a dark brown mix reason for that is that um, my reflections are going to be greeny brown right They'll have a tint of the colour in the background, but they're going to be quite dark. Now, you'll see that it actually does work. There we are. So that's the building, or the bridge, sorry. Right. I've got to put some, sh some reflection into that shortly. So that's the... And that comes underneath there. You just see, see where the water is, where the difference of the water is. There we are, so that's the bridge itself. It may not be the right colour, but bear with me. Okay, now I'm adding a little more red to that. A little more water. And this is the building in the background. Right, so that's the building. Albeit still very quite dark. Always the best way to treat these areas. Well, now we have a white area, but we have that bank. So plenty of green in there. There, that's a reflection of the green bank. So the way it's bleeding into that area. Now we have, um, we, prob we probably wouldn't see much of the buildings because they're so far back um, mainly sky really so I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine to that to give an in an effect of the sky it's a little bit more ultramarine there it's uh, that creates a gray because you've got to remember it's a gray day there we go now I'm going to use a flat brush now a small flat and I'm going to lift off where I think the windows might appear. So just mopping away at a bit of paint there. Right. Um, mopping away at just, I might just see the touch of that window there. Might just mop away a bit of that. There you go. And I'm mopping away the corner of that building because that's definitely white. There. That's good. Okay, that's looking good. Looking very watery, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, now I'm going to go a little darker with the bridge. A little bit more red in there. Because I want that bridge to show up quite, quite nice. There you go. Now that is the bridge itself in reflection. It's all about tone really. There we go. Now while that's beginning to dry, because I do have some um, um, edges to go on that will be harder edges, uh, I'm going to finish off um, where we left off in the first a few moments ago with the um, shadow on the edge there like that. And that's cast, because these are buttress areas. Well, not buttress there. Well, they could be support buttresses there. And it's cast across there. And, of course, that then reflects into the water. So you just go like that. And all of a sudden, they are reflected into the water itself. 
There we go. Just blend a little bit darker along that edge, just to give it a bit of a an edging. There we are. Still rather wet, so that's fine. Just got to put in a bit of I've got another bit of sunlight here that I didn't put in, um, but I'm going to slightly away from the sunlit area so it's not quite as light as the frontage but it's not in full shadow it just goes in like that part of the brickwork really but that's gives a bit of depth to that good that's all looking pretty pretty much uh, pretty much there really now you've got the reflection of that dark tree so burnt umber prussian blue dark sort of earthy green and it will show not not that not where the bridge is reflected but beyond that and to get that we just paint across like that and that's holding at that edge now and we just pull across like that so it's still slightly damp and it's just bleeding in so that's that reflection of that lovely tree a bit harder edges coming in the foreground to, to denote rippling there we are and under the bridge we have that lovely dark reflection so and I'm going to go dark green with this sort of a brown green um, so that's under there like that and it's got to be arced uh, to reflect the um, that's the water get running under the bridge really there we go just going to reflect that a little bit darker too It'll gradually sink away so that's a reflection of the um of the water going under the or, or the reflection of the arch of the bridge really there you go pick up that good that's looking quite uh, quite healthy and quite good now with a smaller brush it's the finer details now um, we've got reflection you've, you've got posts there now they are white but I've not exactly masked them greatly but what I'm going to do I'm going to put um, shadow down the down the um, left hand side because of the uh, sun coming from the right although there's not a great deal of sun there there we are. So that denotes the shadow side of the post. And of course there is, um, there's actually a couple of cross sections, but I'm only going to put one in um, just for um, continuity purposes and the fact that it's still a bit hot, you know, it's there, too high. Now, the other reflections will be um, in like a greeny grey so it's like a watery green um, and those reflections would be um, all windows they're like that um, that one's disappeared so it's not a problem um, there would also be the posts on top of the bank so you've got the bank first and then you've got post 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 another one there another one there the one there you've got a little bit of the cross sections that you can just about um, um, envisage just about see um, you've also got a little bit of feeling of windows in this building a bit like that there we go and just use your use your finger just to pull down just to try and just blur them a little bit and that way they sit there quite nicely as reflections um, good okay while that's completely drying I'm going to now um, just do a little bit of lining for the rest of the picture just to pull it all together okay this is where we pull it all together um, we get everything to come together extremely well hopefully all being well now for start off there is a road here uh, and that will create a bank where 
the sun is coming from the right. Um, we've got also another grass verge there, like that. So it just indicates really, you know, something going on there. Um, now we look at this main building. Um, there is a lamp here, so let's put that in. There we go. Around like that, and then the bowl underneath. And it's attached to a bracket. There we go. That's the lovely old lamp that stands up there very, very nicely. There we are. So that's the lamp. Um, a bit more burnt umber. Okay. So now we just line up one or two little areas that really need that extra sort of punch, you know, under the gutter line there and there. Um, maybe just a little under there and there where the chimney is, down the back edge of the, of, of the pots. Um, uh, right. Oh, and the windows like that just to enhance the depth of those windows see how that little bit of um, paint out actually enhances the depth of those windows um, there's sort of like a doorway I think that's sort of doorway there and we have a window there and a window there always nice thing to do just give them a little bit more of a strength it's a secondary sort of feature. Um, we've got a dark area there. It's a slight overhang shadow, but I'll put that in in brown in this one. That's it. Um, and we do have a downpipe. A bit more blue with this mix to create a dark, like a black colour. There's a bit of guttering going in there. Um, just going to soften that. So I've got the brush in my mouth at the moment, but there we are. See the way I've softened that to create a shadow. These are all tips that um, you know. Um, you just make it up as you go along, really. Um, oh, and there's a downpipe here, so it comes out. It's not very thick. It's just finishing down the edge of the building there that's good um, right here's another area that within the shadow there is probably shadow areas there's the overhang of that roof there and the overhang there of that roof line um, there's a bit of overhang there okay Good. Just got to attend to that building in the distance there in a second. Um, now we have some interesting shapes on the brickwork now of the bridge. I'm going to leave the main building fairly well untouched, but the brickwork on the bridge needs just a little bit of, I don't know, raw sienna stroke. burnt umber that sort of color um, because um, there's sort of like a, a small sort of like a ridging top, um, brick along the top so that's indicated like that and then we're not showing every brick but there is just a hint of a line there and there um, and this area um, has a bit of strength, a bit of darkness to it, so I'm pulling that down and just pull it across with with the with the hand, with the finger, and then indicate one or two little tiny touches of brickwork here and there, a different shading of brickwork. That way it gives it detail or a hint at detail without actually um, painting every single uh, brick in. And I'm going to give it this just a little bit of different, uh, just 
a touch of yellow we've got yellow there there we go touch a bit more t yellow that's um cad um raw sienna or burnt or um yellow ochre raw sienna or yellow ochre a little bit there uh just a touch there of some hinting at some brickwork and little touches here and there nothing too um nothing too detailed just helps to give that a uh, little bit of edging, a little bit of lining. And then with the point of the brush, you're going to have some one or two little touches of shadow here and there, particularly on the brickwork where it overhangs there. Uh, a little bit on the brickwork there. A little bit there, perhaps a little bit there. Um, a little bit of shadow work there. And also a couple of these round... Um, metal sections that actually hold the brickwork in um, either side of the bridge helps to hold the brickwork in quite often seen in this sort of sort of old structure um, now i'm putting in the sense of a tile along the top or a ridge in the brickwork just purely with a line of the brush now you can see where the top of the bridge actually finishes with a row of what they call soldier bricks that stand up there we go that's looking good now i'm putting a darker shadow in the right the left hand side of that um overhang there of, of the um buttress area there and um, and then finally we need to put in like a little bit of reflection of the old mill in the water and uh, a little bit of blue a little bit of red, uh, red just a touch and we've got the reflection of that so that comes directly underneath and it would actually sit somewhere like that with a cross section like that and a cross section like that and because we're doing what we're doing we need just to pull that down just to soften that a little bit and that is the reflection of the mill in the water and then finally we need some little touches of um, sort of rippling within the water. Now I'm going to use for that I'm going to use ultramarine blue just a touch of raw sienna in there and we're going to show quite a bit of rippling in the foreground like that and in actual fact I'm going to use some really dark colour there just to to give it a sense of, of that, that nice feeling of, of sort of rippling within the water glazing really I'm just glazing the water in places really just pulling a bit of that um, warm color across and like that and then just drag the brush across the paper just to indicate, don't overdo this, because if you do, you do lose the sense of water. And, well, you know, as a little sketch of um, that scene, I think it's pretty much there. Um, let me just we'll put a couple of figures in. Always nice to put a couple of figures, uh, get the heights right, that's the key to it. So we're where's one figure there here we are looking at the um, that's a bit um, grey we've got another smaller figure there that's it and we're going to put a dog in which um, there again is always a useful thing to do and 
they will need shadow. Um, not a lot because there's not a great deal of sun, but although I've shown quite a bit of shadow. And just a bit up the wall. There we are. And all that's required now is to sign it and to take the surround away. Okay, well there's the finished painting with the um, tape removed. Just going to sign it. I'm going to sign it in the right hand corner. It's nice and dry there. And uh, I will sign it with the paint and a brush that I produce the picture. So I'm going to sign it there. In my normal signature. And that is a picture of Finching Field Bridge, lovely village of Finching Field, and the Wonky World Gallery um, overlooking the water and the green. Hope you've enjoyed that video. We look forward to seeing all again. And um, if you like what you've seen, please subscribe. Click on the bell if you require notifications and keep tuned. Thank you all for watching my YouTube channel.